Hello everyone, welcome back after a long time. I've been gone, I know, but now I'm back. So everybody who is happy about that may comment, I am happy that you're back. And for everybody that does not do that, I will be very sad. You will bring tears to my eyes, just so you know. But before I start crying, let's just get into the topic of today's video. Also, if you hear a little whirring sound in the background, it's because my air conditioner is on, because it's like 30 degrees, which might not be super hot for some people, but for Swiss German cheese folks like me, it's pretty damn hot. But anyway, video topic. Why does your art suck? Well, first things first, as a little motivator, there are basically four ways that you can suck at drawing. I know you can suck at many disciples in drawing. However, you can boil it down to four basic components of the suckening. And that would be first, to have the wrong tools. Second, not enough time. Third, not enough technical skill, and fourth, not enough physical motor skills. And we're gonna look at every single one of them, which sounds like more than it is, because let's be honest, four things is not a lot. Now, let's start with the most common thing responsible for making people's drawing abilities bad. Not having enough technical skill. And with technical skill, I mean knowledge about drawing, knowledge how something works, how you construct perspective, knowledge about form, about light, about colors, everything, and the skills to apply that. The technical skill of drawing is basically the technical skill of a mechanic that can hear an engine and tell you, well, she's ready to die. And what do you know? He was right. Your technical skill is everything that you need to learn to master something. It basically boils down to everything that your brain does when you draw. Except for generating the electricity that makes your hands move. That's another point in a list though. Now that we know what it is that most people suck at, how do you fix that? Well, unfortunately, the most common thing that makes people suck at art is also the most boring one to fix. Because fixing or Increasing your technical skill at drawing requires you to, well, draw. But not only draw the things that you like, you also have to draw the things that you don't like and the things that you absolutely don't like. And after you've done a study session of things that you do not like to draw, you're gonna need a theoretical lesson in stuff like anatomy and color theory. It's like going to school all over again. Except you're the student and the teacher, which makes grading your work kind of awkward. But, you know, it's just the only way to increase your technical skill. Assess what kind of technicality you lack and then just learn it. Sounds pretty easy, right? Well, a lot of things sound easy, but actually aren't. And this is one of them. But the good thing about that is basically everyone can do it. Learning art is not really a privilege. Some people take a lot of time, some people don't. And unfortunately, as I said, this is pretty boring. However, this is also the easiest thing you can do to improve your skills at drawing. Everybody can do it in their due time. And now let's go to the second most common thing, which is very tightly behind having not enough technical skills. I'm talking about not having enough time. Everybody who has ever picked up a pen and tried to draw something, so I presume everybody who watches this video right now, knows that it takes time to draw. Some people take a little more time and some people a little less. However, it always takes time. And with that, I mean hours upon hours. Now, with all our busy lives, most people, they don't have hours upon hours to dedicate to drawing, especially if it's just their hobby. So what can you actually do to get more time to draw? The answer is simple and has absolutely nothing to do with drawing, because the answer to that is planning ahead. Plan ahead your drawing sessions. Specifically make time in your calendar for your hobbies. That also helps against sudden demotivation when it's time to draw. But seriously, if you just take a few minutes every week to plan out when do you really want to draw and actually write into your calendar that every day from 6 to 9 p.m. it's drawing time, not only are you more likely to actually draw for these three hours and be motivated for it, but also you will have much more time to draw because you have dedicated it already and you're not just drawing in between your tasks. Now, having time to draw is kind of a privilege. 
Some people, they do not have the time to draw. When they get home from their work, they are so tired they need to go to bed immediately, sometimes without even eating. In cases like that, get a sketchbook and draw on your way to work. Maybe if you use the bus or the train, you can draw very well in that. Or you're having a little break at work and don't know what to do, maybe pick up your pen instead of a cigarette. Every little bit helps and every little bit works. Now let's get to the third most common thing that makes your drawings look kinda whack. Not having the right motor skills. Your physical ability to draw. And mind you, we treat in terrain of very uncommon things. Because this one is the actual physical ability to draw the line how you imagine it. That means that for some reason you may have a physical disability or a disability with nerves. You know, the things that send signals down to your hands and make them move. Now, I'm not talking from experience. I do not have any kind of physical hand disability or whatever, and I think my nerves are pretty good as well. I might be genetically clumsy, but that's a pretty far stretch. However, there is stuff that you can do even if you have a physical disability or some kind of nerve damage that makes your drawings look bad because you just can't do the lines that you actually want to draw. Some people, they have lost their hand and then just learned to do everything with the other hand. Even if they were right-handed, now the left hand is basically the right one. And for those who are, I don't know, missing a finger or a few, there are actually quite many ways to help with that. One of the cheapest ones is just get somebody with a 3D printer. If you do not have one, then find someone on the internet. There are lots and lots of stores that do custom 3D printing. Print yourself an open source finger model, attach some string and profit. I know all of this can come across as quite harsh or uneducated. And frankly, I am. I mean, I don't know how it is if you are missing some fingers or even a limb. But what I do know is that the most common thing when you're missing limbs or fingers or whatever is that you can actually do mostly everything that you've done before. However, you just need to relearn it a little. And the biggest hurdle is the mental one. The one where you tell yourself, I can't do it. Once you tell yourself that you can actually do it, the rest will be a piece of cake. And speaking about pieces of cake, the last thing the absolute most uncommon thing that makes your drawings look bad or that makes your art look bad is the cake itself. The thing that you buy, your physical or non-physical things that you acquire per money transfer in order for you to create whatever you want to create. That's right. It's a giant misconception from many, many artists on the internet. In many corners, the common sense is that the more expensive a program is, the bigger your tablet is and the more color accurate your Wacom can be, the better your art will get. And to that I say bullshit. Absolute balonies. No matter how much money you will spend on art supplies or hardware for digital art, whatever you create will only be as good as you. I could draw something with, I don't know, oil paint that costs multiple thousands of dollars. It would not come out well, because what makes your drawing good is not the medium that you use, or the hardware or software that you use. It is how you use it. And how you use it is not the fault of the tools themselves. That is the fault of your technical ability, the things that you gotta learn in order to draw well. And that makes us loop back to the most common thing that you need to work on. Because there are no things that you can do to make your tools better. They are always as good as you are. If you spend 10 or $10,000 on art supplies, you won't get better a single percent. And to debunk this little thing that most art communities have with more expensive means better art, you should check the causation and correlation thing with expensive art supplies and good art. Because expensive art supplies do not cause good art. But if your art is good, then you most likely have already invested enough in order for you to get the expensive art supplies. And if it's your job, that's a no-brainer. What I'm trying to say is whether you spend not much money or very much money has absolutely no effect on your art whatsoever. So put your thoughts where they really matter and have fun improving your art skills 
now with this newly acquired knowledge of yours. With that said, happy drawing and goodbye.